Hello again, Doc Ron Bio here to discuss more advanced restriction enzyme digests on circular plasmid DNA. This is problem set number two in a series. And just a reminder that the figures I use here are simple representations of double-stranded DNA. Keep in mind that restriction enzymes uh, digest two strands of DNA, even though I'm depicting them as simple loops. Let's get started with a few examples. I, I will mention the enzyme being used your job is to think about the number and size of fragments that will be created from the digest using the plasmid map. In addition, challenge yourself to predict the number of bands you will see on an agarose gel after electrophoresis. If you have not performed gel electrophoresis, please watch my previous video on this very important uh, biotechnology. If it helps, uh, pause the video so you can see um, the plasmid map and the gel uh, and so you can think about the answers first before I give you the answers. This first example is a single digest of a 16 kb plasmid with the restriction enzyme ECHOR1. You can see on the plasmid map that there is just one restriction site for ECHOR1. Therefore, this, this digest simply linearizes our plasmid. There are no additional sites, so no additional fragments will be generated. Therefore, the size of the fragment um, is the size of the whole plasmid, which as we said before is 16 KB. Okay, so if you perform the digest here, you linearize your DNA, getting one long 16 KB fragment. On our gel, this one fragment would, would appear as a 16 KB band. You can see that our band runs the same size as the 16 KB band in our marker. A marker is a standard for, for size comparison of our bands. So in all of these representations, the marker will be shown here with M and our digest will be depicted here. So again, in this example, you get one long 16 KB fragment and that um, band will appear the same size as the 16 KB marker band. Here we have a digest with BAM H1. Note from the map that there are two BAMH1 restriction sites, here and here. My approach is to figure out predictable fragments. You can see that each quadrant here is 4 KB of DNA. That's 16 divided by 4. So I like to separate it in the following way as a quadrant. So echo R1 up here, down here is one, there's a BAMH1 site over here, and here we can draw another one. So um, if you break up something that's 16 KB in size, we could say that this quadrant over here is four, this quadrant over here is four, this quadrant is four, and this quadrant is four KB. We can also say that if you break up each quadrant in half, you'll get two KB fragments. So for example, for this uh, four KB span, if you break it up here at this BAMH1 site, that's two KB and two KB. Okay, so you could say that around the entire length of the plasmid. Okay, so first and foremost here, you can see that if we're digesting with BAMH1, we'll have this site here and this site here. Okay, so this first fragment's going to span one quadrant, that's four KB plus two. So you'd get six KB there. That's four plus two again. The other fragment created from this digest would possess two quadrants, this one, this one, plus this one. So that would be four plus four plus two for a total of 10 KB. So we have one fragment that is six and one fragment that is 10. Okay. So to check your answer, make sure all the fragments add up to the total plasmid size. We have two fragments, one is 6 KB, the other is 10 KB, so the math seems to make sense as it adds up to 16, which if you recall is a total size of this particular plasmid. Again, looking at our agarose gel, we have a clear and easily interpreted result as the fragments will run as two distinct bands um, of different sizes shown here. So again, we have our 6 KB fragment shown here, and we have a 10 KB fragment 
shown here, okay? In this example, we are doing a double digest with ECHOR1 and PST3. There are only two sites total, one for each enzyme, and because of this, we will generate two fragments. Again, I recommend you set up the quadrants. It's easier to visualize how this 16 KB fragment breaks down. Um, so for ECHOR1 and PST3, we have one site here, one site here. And so for this first um, example, uh, we're going to have a, a fragment span one quadrant plus two. So that will be six KB, four plus two. And our second one will span one quadrant, two quadrants plus two. So we have four plus four plus two. Okay. So again, we'll have a 6 KB fragment and a 10 KB fragment. So keep in mind that second fragment, it's uninterrupted um, by the digest. So it is the remainder of the plasmid, which is 10 KB. It's always a good idea to double check the math as I did before, counting up uh, 4 plus 4 for the two quadrants plus the extra 2 KB. So always um, do the math, add up to make sure that you are um, calculating the digest correctly. And again, overall for this uh, plasmid, we're looking at a plasmid that's 16 KB. So we have one that is 6, we have one that is 10, so that adds up to 16. That math looks correct. Looking at this digest on your agarose gel, again, we will have a 6 KB fragment shown here. We will also have a 10 KB fragment shown here. And so those um, fragments will run as two distinct bands of different sizes on your agarose gel. Interestingly enough, digests using different restriction enzymes can lead to the same results based on your map. Uh, this may not be a problem if you're just analyzing your plasmid, but it may cause problems down the road if you're actually using this for cloning. Uh, just be aware that each digest result looks what it looks like. Um, predict the sizes of your digest based on your map and you'll be fine. Um, you could always be selective with the types of enzymes that you do, that you use if you're performing cloning. But um, it is interesting that with completely different digests with different enzymes, you can get the same results. In this example, we're performing a double digest with ECHOR1 and BAMH1. This digest takes into consideration three restriction sites as BAM1, BAMH1 has two restriction sites. Uh, this digest, however, will create three different fragments. So this digest results in half a quadrant or 2 KB uh, in between this ECHOR1 and BAMH1. So this fragment right here would be 2 KB. The second fragment from this ECHOR1 site again to this BAMH1 site would span an entire quadrant. So that size would be four. Um, the final fragment runs in, uninterrupted um, from this BAMH1 site all the way back to this other BAMH1 site. So that's spanning, um, let's see, that's spanning this quadrant here, all the way back around and so because it's uninterrupted, um, you know, you have a 16 KB plasmid, we've already taken away six. So that's going to be 10 KB for this, uh, this fragment running from the, BAM, the two BAMH1 sites. Looking at our agarose gel, we have a clear and easily interpreted result uh, based on the fragments because all the fragments run as three distinct bands of different sizes. Again, just to reiterate, we had a 2 KB uh, fragment, a 4 KB fragment, and the remainder, which would be 10. So we have our 10 KB fragment running here at 10 KB with the marker. We have our 4 KB fragment running here at 4 KB. And last but not least, we have our 2 KB fragment running here with the marker of 2 KB. The last example is a double digest using BAMH1 and PST3 
While this digest uses two enzymes, our plasmid map shows us that there are three restriction sites again, as BAMH1 has two sites on the map. This digest will produce three fragments. Interestingly enough, however, two fragments are the same size. So let's go ahead and look at this, this digest here. Uh, again, we're using BAMH1, which has two sites, and this PST3. Okay, so the first uh, fragment will be between these two sites, and that's 4KB. That's a fragment. If you have a hard time visualizing that, remember to put in your quadrant markers. So this is 2KB, this is 2KB, so you're getting 4KB fragment there uh, from that digest in between BAMH1 and PST3. The second fragment that you'll get runs from this BAMH1 past this echo R1 into this BAMH1. So again, if you're looking at uh, the quadrants here, this is four plus two here. So this together would be six KB. And we'd also have a third and final fragment that's the spanning this quadrant plus two. So that's four plus two giving you a fragment that is 6KB in size, okay? So as I mentioned before, you're going to get a 4KB fragment, and then you're gonna get two 6KB fragments, okay? So these will be the same size, but it does span the entire 16KB length of the plasmid. Um, it's easier to see the results here on this gel. So, when we run our digest out on an agarose gel, again, you have 4KB, 6KB, and 6KB, okay? Um, however, these two fragments are indistinguishable on the gel. They will run together, these two fragments, as one band on the gel. So I've show, sort of symbolized um, this here. So, you know, when you combine the blue and the yellow, you get this one mixed fragment band. Um, that is not to say that they um, combine in any way, but this is just to say that both of these 6KB fragments are shown here in this band. This 4KB band runs distinctly here as itself, um, but this is a common occurrence in the lab. So oftentimes you'll perform a restriction enzyme digest and it'll produce fragments of the same or very close to the same size, and you can't distinguish the sizes of those. Um, you can't distinguish the different um, fragments on the gel. They run as the same size band on the gel. So not necessarily something to worry about at the bench, um, as long as you have knowledge of what your map is and where the restriction enzyme sites are, you'll be able to predict that and deal with it when the time comes. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope it has helped you in your studies of restriction enzymes. Maybe you're working in the lab. Maybe you're learning this at school. I hope it's helpful. Let me know below, and we'll see you next time.